All right, ladies, good. What, what time? Good morning. Good morning, ladies. Morning, sir. All right, good, good. So, are you happy that today is the, the last day or tomorrow? Today is my birthday, sir. I don't miss no school. <laughs> so, that's why I have to turn on the camera. Turn to yeah, because I find it like a decent person in my own house. Happy, happy like, birthday, happy birthday. Thank you, sir. I look like a decent person. I mean, see many, many more. Thank you. Where is Austin? Austin, sing happy birthday for her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Sir Carol Gansing, Carol Gansing embarrasses me. Happy birthday. Yo, happy birthday to, happy birthday to myself. I'll say yes to you. <laughs> when we see you, I'll say yes to you. Mila is here? Yes, sir. All right, good, good. And Archer is here, Barty. Sorry, I don't see them. I'm push back the thing. So. All right, no, ladies. Listen up now. We have, we have a lot to cover today. Today is our last class. But remember that we're going to have the session that we're going to next week, where we're going to look at some of the paper ones. Not the paper one, some paper tools. Not for US and the Caribbean because we cover most of it. I think we have covered all the past papers when it comes to US and the Caribbean. All right, ladies. So today we're going to look at two very important events in the Caribbean. One, we're going to look at the 1930s riot. And the next one we're going to look at, we're going to look at the West Indies, Federation. So the 1930s riot and the West Indies Federation. And this is not for the paper two, this is for the paper one, all right? Because you're going to get some questions on it. You are not supposed to write any essays on it. It is just for the paper one. Now, let us look what was happening in the 1930s. So in the 1930s in the Caribbean, uh, a lot was taking place. In fact, in the United States in 1929 to the 1930s, 30, in the US, they had a Great Depression. So that was that was what was taking place in the US. Now, my question to you, we know the relationship between the United States and the Caribbean. What are some of the impact of the Great Depression? Or what you think the Great Depression is going to have on the Caribbean? What are some of the impacts? Think about it. Great Depression so going in the US. And a Great Depression was an economic collapse of their, e well, the economic, the economy collapse. So the economic collapse, and they call it the Great Depression. What are some of the impact that is going to have on the Caribbean? Come on, you know. Ready, ladies? Sir, I would say, sir, you no, know, like the US normally like supply other Caribbean countries with like goods and those mm. stuff. I think there's going to be a, a shortage in that because they don't really have it because of that. The, the depression. Very good shortage of food. And if you have shortage of food, what that's going to cause? Starvation. Mm. So you're going, to have, you're going to have starvation. Sir, um, riots. 
Yes, so right. What else when it comes to shortage of food? Uh, diseases. Disease shortage of food give you diseases. You are correct, you know. Yeah, but nutrition but and link, stuff like that. Link shortage of food to something else. Shortage of food. High mortality rate. Um, Ladies, it food short. If you have shortage of food and you don't have enough food. Them going fight because they're trying to survive and get them own food. Like that. Yes, sir, you don't have me. I agree with that. But if sir. there's a if you have shortage of food, the food that is available, what that is going, how that is going to impact cost. It's going to increase. Oh, increase. So yes, that is it. So you're going to have price increases. And so we can the food too. So like only like a certain amount of food can go to this. Go place. ahead for me. Somebody said that you're going to have diseases. Yes. Riots. What what else is going to take? What are some of the other things going to take place? Sure, unemployment. Very good. Unemployment. What else is going to happen? You think that those who are employed are going to be treated any better during this time? Low wages. <laughs> so you're going to have a lower wages. Go ahead for me, Emmons. So economic uncertainty. Yes. So the, you have economic uncertainty. What else? Sir, there will be political problems as well because it's politics that this whole thing. So you're going to have political problems, yes, but at this time in the 1930s, could black people vote? No, oh, sir. So you do so if, one second, ladies. So if you have political problems, then you have the one other thing is that you have no vote no representative nobody that you vote for and you have no no voice and so with all the problems if you have diseases you have iron high unemployment you you are dying of hunger you have nobody to talk to go ahead for me archer Sir, I was saying, would you have um increased like social stratification, like increased division between the classes? Because yes, yes. I was rich and poor before, but no, the poor are destitute. They don't have anything at all. And other people who have money, they're either becoming a part of the poor class or they're trying to get more ways to maintain the money that they have already. So they're treating everybody really poorly. And it's very like, good. Yes, you are correct. The gap between the rich and the poor in the society widened. So yes, ladies, these, if we look at all of this right here, in the 1930s, this is how the Caribbean looked right across the Caribbean, from Jamaica, the Bahamas, St. Kitts, right down to Trinidad, Barbados, the entire Caribbean was in serious, serious problem in the 1930s. And you are correct. As a result of the 1930s riot, sorry, not the 1930s riot, because of these conditions in the 1930s, people are not going to sit down and say, all right, time is hard, so we can't do anything about it. We can't There's do no difficult fight. Hmm? I, I was saying is no, they're going to fight. Like right now in the Caribbean? No, like during that time. Yes, yes. Like because the circumstances that like the worst was under, uh, is no, they're going to choose to fight. That, that is true. No, in, so you're correct. So a lot of riots going to take place. Not only riots, but a lot of strikes gonna take place 
riots and strikes right across the Caribbean. The entire Caribbean going to have riots and the entire Caribbean going to have strikes. All right? Now, we want to look at some of the early strikes that are going to take place in the Caribbean. So British Honduras, if you see British Honduras in the exam, which country was, what is the new name for British Honduras? Belize. Belize. So in British Honduras, uh, in 1924, they had a riot there in Trinidad. In 1933, the oil workers in Trinidad said, listen, time very hard. We can't, we're not getting enough money. We have low wages. We can't buy food. Nobody's treating us right. Same thing in, in Belize. The workers in Belize said, listen, we can't afford anything. We can't afford food. Time is so hard. We don't have any rights as workers, yes. And so you have the oil workers gonna strike in Belize, sorry, in Trinidad. Then we also going to have another right that gonna take place in St. Kitts. Same workers, the sugar workers in St. Kitts, 1935. They are complaining also about the poor working conditions uh, that they are not able to survive because of how high the prices and the food and all of these different stuff. Same problem. So St. Kitts had their riot also. Then after St. Kitts, we have St. Vincent. St. Vincent. Same issue in St. Vincent, people writing. Then again, we have writing British Guyana. In British Guyana, people writing again. Same issues. People complaining about St. Lucia. Same issues. Barbados, 1937. Trinidad, you don't realize that one country missing from all of this drama. Uh, Which country? Oh, yeah, why oh, Jamaica isn't there? <laughs> Jamaica, you can imagine where it's going all over the Caribbean and no right in Jamaica, but you know that when we riot, in Jamaica, we are sending a signal to the British government. And the British government must listen, right? They had to listen. And so Jamaica are going to have their riot in 1938. That's when Jamaica are going to have their riot. And this riot started, well, we had a series of strikes because we're always striking here. But the riot is going to start on home estate in Westmoreland. And the riot is going to spread right across the entire country. If we look at in the Caribbean, what is taking place, people are rioting. Why are they rioting? Some of the reasons, one second. Some of the reasons why they are writing is because of the high cost of living, as we would have mentioned earlier, high unemployment. They are writing also because of poor working conditions. And when we talk about poor working conditions, we're talking about things like low wages, Workers had no rights. It was illegal to strike. Yes, you could not strike. It was what illegal. They... Go ahead, from I mean, your, your hand is still up. 
Go ahead for me, ask you. Know? Sir, when you said that it was illegal to strike, sir, I said yeah. it was legal, but they still did. <laughs> so. Yes, they still did. They, 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 the peasants here and the different workers, and in fact, they were called, all of these persons here, they were called laborers. What you just celebrated, yes, on Monday. Labor Day. Very good. So on Monday, you celebrated Labor Day. It's called another name. What name? Victoria. Is Victorian? They changed the name from Empire Day to Labor Day. Now, Labor Day is to commemorate and celebrate all the different heroes are workers in the Caribbean, the laborers, especially the one, the persons who would have fought in the 1930s. That's why we celebrate Labor Day, the laborers. All right. So, ladies, if we look across the Caribbean in the 1930s, that's all over. And there are several different leaders that are going to emerge as a result of the riot in the Caribbean. Several leaders. And I want you to look at the leaders for me. So these are persons who, they are going to play a very key role in the riot. So we have persons like in British Guyana, let us just put Ghana. In British Ghana, we, we have H. Where it is. H. N. Priclo. So that was British Ghana. Please note the name. He was very involved in the labor rights in the 1930s in British Ghana. And, and he played a very important role in Antigua. Let us look at Antigua. In Antigua, you had V.C. Bird and R. V.C. Bird and R. Stevens in Barbados. Repeat. So where's the R? Okay. Sorry. In in Barbados, we had two leaders during this period. They were very instrumental in the riots. We had Clement Kane and Brantley. Adam, very, very important person. Then Sir, that in, name so familiar. Yes, we come into Grantley Adams. He was the, it which, just which one, he was the first, Grantley Adams was the first, I believe the first prime minister of Barbados, not sure. But he was prime minister of the Federation. We come into that just now. Then again, in British Ghana, we had another leader who was very, very instrumental, and that was Chedi. Jagan. Then again, in British Honduras, which is Belize, they had two leaders who were very instrumental in their riots there. And it these leaders were Antonio Sobranis and George Price. I'm telling you from now, these names are, they are going to come on the multiple choice. They're going to ask their question. On then in Jamaica, we had two leaders here, Alexander Bustamante, who were very instrumental, and 
Norman Manley. In Grenada, another leader in Grenada would be Eric Gary. And in St. Lucia, we had George Charles. All right. So if we look at the riots taking place, a lot of leaders, a lot of persons were involved. And out of these, on these different islands, our territories, so again, is not an island and Belize. If you look at it, they are going to emerge as very important figures in these territories. Now, what were some of the effects? of the riots. So we know the riots happened in the 1930s, right across the Caribbean. And the first thing Britain is going to do is that Britain is going to pretend like, okay, we don't know the reasons why the people are rioting. So Britain is going to send to the Caribbean a man by the name of Lloyd Moyne. So that is one of the first effect to investigate or to study the reasons for the riots. And, the re and so Moyne is going to have something that is called the Moyne Royal Commission. So that is what is happening at the end of the riot. Britain is going to send persons to investigate. Why is it that people are uh, people in the Caribbean rioting? We're coming back to the Moine Commission just now. Another thing that is going to happen, the first thing is that you're going to have the formation of trade unions. What what are trade unions? What are the what role trade union is going to play? Is the first time you're hearing the word trade union? Sir, I speak on behalf of like persons. Very good. So the trade unions speak on behalf of the workers because mm -hmm. remember remember ladies that in the 1930s the workers had a lot of problem they had no political representative and they had nobody to to speak on their behalf and Right across the Caribbean, from British Honduras, right down to Jamaica, workers are writing because they really did not like what is going on in the work, the different workplaces, whether on an estate or an oil field or anywhere, they just had issues. And so what is going to take place here is that you're going to have the formation of trade union where the trade union leaders, because most of these persons were mentioned here, were trade union leaders. They formed trade unions. They were very instrumental in the fight because they were they organized the strikes and the riots. BITU, sir. Yes. The BITU is one, uh, which is for Bustamante the Bustamante Trade Union. And so if you look right here, you have a lot of trade, all of these leaders here, they were not only involved in the, the riot or helped to organize the riot, but they were also involved in the formation of trade unions, right? And they speak on behalf of the workers, right? So we have the trade unions taking place right here. Now, in Antigua, Antigua had the Antigua Trades and Labor Union, which was started by V.C. Bird and R. Stevens. 
Barbados had the Barbados Workers Unions, uh, started by Clementine and Grantley Adams, who I would have mentioned here. In Guyana, they had the Industrial Workers Union by Chedi Jagan, British Honduras, which is Belize, Price and Antonio started the General Workers Union, Jamaica, Bustamante started the Bustamante Industrial Trade Union, and Norman Manley started the National Workers Union, Grenada, Eric Geary started the Mental and Manual Workers Union, and St. Lucia had the St. Lucia Workers Cooperative Union. And in fact, Chitlo from, no, is not, he's the one. In fact, one of the earlier unions, I believe that was started in the 1920s in Trinidad was the oil workers. They also had, their union. Now, what were some of the benefits of trade union? So, benefits of trade union. So, one, the first thing, once trade unions are now accepted, you have higher wages. I you have working one for me. I was saying better working conditions. Very good. Better working conditions. You're not able to get overtime pay, right? Or pay for overtime. No, you have compensation for injury on the job. Back then, they didn't have it before the trade union. No, they have vacation leave. People are not able to get vacation leave and sick leave. They are not able to get pensions. Trade unions are going to lobby and lobby against child labor. So they're going to get rid of all the children out of the workforce. Right? And also they're going to have minimum wage. I don't know if this is a very good thing, but it happened. All right, so these are some of the benefits of trade union. Now I'm going back to the effects of the 1930s riot. So one, we had the Lloyd Moyne Commission. Lloyd Moyne was supposed to investigate what were some of the causes of the riot. You have the formation of trade unions. They are going to speak on behalf of the people and we see some of the benefits of having trade unions or what some of the achievements of the trade unions. And in addition to the trade union, the, all right, let us go now to the Moine Commission because out of the Moine Commission, we are going to see some other benefits are effects of the 1930s riot. So let us look now at the Moyen Commission. So we know for sure that Lloyd Moyen was sent from Britain to investigate why the Caribbean, everybody in the Caribbean rioting. Why? Oh, and then I just want to mention this other leader from Trinidad, he was one of the first leader to establish a trade union in the Caribbean and it was Arthur Cipriani. And I believe he would have established the Trinidad working Working Men's Association. Remember that, please. Very popular on the exam. Now let us look now at the Moyne Commission. So as a result of 
Lord more, more investigating the in the, the problems in the Caribbean. He's going to say that the Caribbean healthcare was terrible. So he spoke about healthcare, housing, education, that only the wealthy had education. Uh, housing conditions in the Caribbean was terrible. He mentioned about the labor conditions in the Caribbean. He talked about that the Caribbean was underdeveloped. In fact, one person mentioned and said a study of poverty was a study of the Caribbean. That to tell you how bad the Caribbean, the terrible state the Caribbean was actually in. And he's going to make some recommendation. And the first, so we, we know the problems that he would have discovered. And these are nothing new, nothing new to us. But he's going to make some recommendation. Some of the recommendation includes one that listen. If the Caribbean, if the people in the Caribbean don't have anybody to speak on their behalf, they don't have any, most of the people in the Caribbean, they are not able to vote. They don't have any voice in the in the country. Then guess what? You need to start. You need to give the people in the Caribbean adult suffrage, which is adults having voting rights. Now, another name for adult suffrage is what we call political enfranchisement. All right? So that is people are able to vote. Now, Jamaica was the first country to pass a law to give the citizens adult suffrage the rights to vote, all right? First, first country in the Caribbean, not in the British Caribbean, I should say, British Caribbean. So he recommended adult suffrage. Also, he said that you need to have trade unions. He was the one who said that, listen, people need to have trade unions in order to improve the working condition. Trade unions need to speak on behalf of the laborers in the country. He's also going to recommend a fund, which is a colonial development fund. And well, it's actually colonial welfare and development fund. And this fund, ladies, was supposed to help with the developing, building healthcare, build housing, contribute to schools, build roads, you know, develop the Caribbean to let the Caribbean look like a, you know, a better place. Another thing that he's going to recommend is that the Caribbean should have internal self-government. Now, internal self-government is different from self-government. Self-government, is independent and they get full independent. So he's saying that the Caribbean has a lot of problem and Britain cannot solve all the problems. So the people need to be able to vote, right? They need to, they need to vote for their own representative. So their own representative can solve their own problem. But the first thing he's going to do is that before we give the people independence, let us give them internal self-government. So Britain, you are not going to be in charge of some of the things, things like housing, health, education. Allow the people to vote for their own leaders. And when they vote for their own leaders, then their lead, those leaders will be able to solve the issues, but we are still have control over them. So it's internal self-government under Britain. And he said that this is going to prepare them for independence, but he's also going to recommend something else, 
he's going to recommend the West Indies Federation. All right. So that is one of the things that he's going to recommend. Now, I am going now to Federation. So he's going to recommend Federation that the Caribbean, you can't give the Caribbean independence. That was his argument. You cannot give the Caribbean independence as separate country or, well, islands because they are too small. So he said to them that, listen, you need to give the Caribbean independence as one country. And that was through a federation. Now, the idea of a union or union between Caribbean countries, it's nothing new. So from as early as 1623, we had a federation. Uh, we had the Leeward Island Federation where all the Leeward Islands in the Caribbean federated. Then you had the Windward Island Federation, nothing new. We have made several attempts at federating, meaning all Caribbean countries should join together to form one political union, several attempts. And so the entire Caribbean, a federation started in 1958. So in 1958, and these were the countries, 10 countries joined, uh, joined the federation. Antigua and Barbuda, Barbados, Dominica, Grenada, Jamaica. At this time, Jamaica was in charge of Turks and Caicos and Cayman. So Cayman and Turks and Caicos was under Jamaica. Montserrat, St. Kitts, Anguilla, Nevis and St. Kitts, they were one territory. St. Lucia, St. Vincent, Trinidad, and Tobago. Belize and British Guyana say that they don't want to be a part of the Federation. All right, so they were the two territories at the outset that said, listen, we don't want to be part of a Federation. So the Caribbean right now, they start the Federation in 1958. 1958, they started the Federation. And the Federation was to prepare them for independence as one territory. So instead of you have a Jamaican flag, you're going to, and if we had continued with Federation, you would not be a Jamaican citizen now. Your citizenship would maybe be the United States of the West Indies, right? Because all of these countries here would be one country. What do you think about it? Do you think that the Caribbean would have been better off had we had a federation? Well, we had a federation for our short period, but if federation continued, do you think that things would be better for us? No. No? Well, to some extent, no. That is because the Caribbean is still in a lot of problems. So the Federation is going to have a flag. So this was the flag. Had we gone independent, this, are, this is how our flag would look. Sir? Yes? That's a very ugly flag. Yeah, but that was the yeah, Federation. Yeah. Why do you think they have the sea? Because of the Caribbean. Yeah, we are linked by the sea. And then this was, this was a court of arm, courts of arm. The Prime Minister of the, in fact, we had a federal parliament where every island voted for a member to be part of the parliament. The Prime Minister of the Federation was Grantley Adams from Barbados. People wanted Norman Manley and Eric Geary from, not Eric Geary, Eric Williams from Trinidad to be leaders of the Federation, but Prime Minister of the Federation, but it never worked out. We had a Governor General of the Federation, right? We had our own stamp during the Federation, so 
the you didn't have separate island stamps. You had one stamp. In the Federation, out of the Federation, we also had a university that came about, the University College of the West Indies. All right. And one of the first persons in the Caribbean who spoke about Federation was T.A. Marisha from Grenada. So he's considered the father of the Federation. He was very, very instrumental when it comes to the formation of uh, the Federation. And so people said that it is important for us to federate. So we had a one army, the West India Regiment. We had a Supreme Court. We had a shipping service that shipped things from island to island. We had airline came out of it, the British West Indies, so the Caribbean had one airline, one university. And so if we look at it, things were going very good when it comes to the Federation. Go ahead for me, Barty. Sir, um, quick question. When we had the Federation, we were still uh, like, uh, what's that word? We were like still under Britain. Britain. Under Britain, sir, I think, you know, I think if we had that federation, I think, you know, like how Dubai, not Dubai, you know, like how the United Emirates have one. And the and United States. Exactly, and they're doing pretty well. I think we could have made it work. Yes, because if we had a federation right now, right now we wouldn't pay in a lot for gas because that would be part of our country and mm. we'll be getting <laughs> yes. but sir would take away the we, we we would not be a colony of britain anymore just like no but we'd still have our little you know little runnings it could work but, but there uh, would still be disputes yep yeah, but in the united states now yes you still have this with california and the other states always in problem And we do have a federation now, and we still have problems. Even in Jamaica, look at, look at Jamaica. You have people from Montego Bay, always a close Kingstonian. People say that people behave as if Kingston is the capital of, well, behave like Kingston is the only part of Jamaica. So you're going to have problems. But federation, Remember, the purpose of federation was to prepare the islands for independence as one territory. And federation is going to fail because Bustamante is going to argue and Bustamante is going to say that, listen, I am not into this federation thing. Jamaica should be, Jamaica should control should get independence by themselves. Jamaica should have their own flag, their own national anthem, everything. And then they had other problems. If you're going to have a country, you need to know where the capital city is going to be. Trinidad wanted the capital city. Jamaica. Jamaica wanted the capital city. Sir, wait, sir. Like, if it TikTok, like I was seeing some TikToks, and you know, some Caribbean people from other Caribbean countries, they're mm. like, Jamaica, as like, they, like, we are the capital of the Caribbean. Because when somebody think about the Caribbean, the first country that comes to their mind is Jamaica. So they said that we want to be better than all of the rest of the Caribbean countries. That is true. And so, if you look at it, the capital city, they had war over the capital city. Then some of them had sight over how much members should be in the parliament to represent the island of Jamaica. They had sight over everything, almost every single thing. Go ahead for me, Barclay. Sure, but we could sort that out because again, I'm going back to that same example. Saudi Arabia has its own capital. Abu Dhabi, Dubai has its own capital and Qatar and those other countries have their own capital. So we could have made it work. Everybody gets 
elected to the state. Everybody gets their fair share. Like Caribbean, would we would have a um, what's that called? Would have a set Caribbean, right? So everybody would just use one set amount of money, right? Currency, one currency. Right, one currency. It could work. That could make sense. Yeah, because other Caribbean countries, okay, like Grenada, the Spice Island, you come into, you bring that to the table. Jamaica bring banana and some other little stuff. Uh, our next country brings something. Ghana probably bring rice. You know, everybody contributes a little something. I will make it work. Listen, do you know the minds of black people? Listen, we are so strong. It's so crazy. Anything we put our minds to, we literally can do. We have built so much. Man, sir, we could do this. Like, this is so, I can see the vision. We are, you see, Ken and Ken are going to go to. She go and have a meeting and then she go and propose it. They can do that in the future, no? Propose it and see if them will actually listen and to you. Also, so in 1961, what is going to take place, ladies, is that Buster Manti is going to force Norman Manley to call and to have a referendum where Jamaicans are going to vote and say that, listen, we don't want to be a part of the Federation. Jamaica said that they don't want to be a part of the Federation and they want to be a, to get their independence on their own because if they should go with the other Caribbean countries, the other Caribbean countries are going to make them poor. Now, Eric Williams said 10 minus 1, 10 minus 0, sorry, 10 minus 1, leaves nothing and so trinidad left the federation after jamaica left and then after that each caribbean country received their independence separately so jamaica and trinidad got their independence 1962 so if you realize that jamaica independence is the 6th of august 1962 but trinidad is august the 30th 1962 then Barbados and Ghana got their independence in 1966, Bahamas 1973, Grenada 74, Dominica 1978, and St. Lucia 78. And so everybody, that's how all of us in the Caribbean have a separate flag, different nationalities, different government, but had it gone the way Britain wanted, we would have received independence as one country. All right. So, ladies, this is the end of it for us. I'll send you some. Uh, so you mean so this, is the, this is the last class? Like, you know, I'm um, nothing. Not here for you ever again. Or that's how you get that straight. Yeah. No, ladies. Ladies, I'm telling you, this was a perfect, perfect two years. Grade 10 and grade 11. Wow. That's, that's a strong mm -hmm. statement. So, you know, I was Listen. doing a say for last night and I was making some notes on the effects of marriage on the plantation. You want to pack, you want to send those documents my way? I have no notes. Listen, I have notes. You see, the, you see, it's a blank page you were looking at. The pages had notes. It's just a time we spent notes of that one because it gave us it work and I didn't do the work. Right. Osh, I would have given notes, but them teeth my book. Osh. Yes, no, I can't No. But listen up now, ladies. It was indeed 